and not a one of them will perish, I lose nothing. To say that Jesus Christ died upon the cross for people who go to hell is to say that Jesus is a bumbling shepherd and that Jesus is full of faults and Jesus has lost that for which He has given His blood and life. No thank you. You may have that Savior. I will take the one who says, I lose nothing. There is no greater subject that we will ever study than the subject of God Himself and His glory. The crown jewel of all theology is the study of the atonement. There is no nobler and no more eminent truth than the saving grace of God in the death of His Son for undeserving sinners. This is the coveted jewel atop the diadem of all theology, the atonement of Jesus Christ. We preach Christ crucified, that Christ Jesus died for sinners upon the cross is an indisputable fact, that Christ made a perfect atonement upon the cross that alone is the exclusive way of salvation is an irrevocable truth. And no one can be saved apart from believing that Jesus Christ has died for sinners upon the cross. But the crucial question before us tonight is this. For whom did Christ die? Or to put the question another way, Did Christ die for the entire world? Did He die for every single individual who has ever lived before His coming into the world, at the time of His uh, being here, and has He died for everyone who would ever live in the history of the world, or did Christ die exclusively for the elect? And what did Jesus actually do upon the cross? Did Jesus actually redeem everyone? Did Jesus actually reconcile everyone to God? Did Jesus actually propitiate the anger of God toward everyone? Did Jesus Christ actually take away everyone's sin at the cross, believer and unbeliever alike. Was Jesus' death an actual atonement? Or did Jesus merely make everyone savable? Did He merely make everyone reconcilable, contingent upon whether or not the sinner repents and believes upon Christ. Do any for whom Christ died suffer eternal punishment? Did Christ die in vain for any? Did He die for those who would never believe? And if so, why? Did Jesus die for those who were already in hell because of unbelief during the Old Testament era? Did Jesus die for those already in hell? And if so, why? I am convinced that the Bible teaches a definite atonement. By that I mean, and theologians mean, and Bible teachers mean down through the centuries that Jesus Christ died triumphantly, and that He died exclusively for all who would believe upon Him. And it is also known as limited atonement. Why take world to mean something other than every person in the world? And why take all to mean something other than all people in the entire world? What is the number one reason? to believe in 
the fact, the truth, that Jesus died exclusively for the people of God. The unity of the Godhead. That God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all work together in perfect unity in saving sinners. There is perfect harmony and perfect unity and perfect economy. All that the Father gives me will come to me. That is one of the most extraordinary statements in the entire Bible on the sovereignty of God in salvation. It stands as a Mount Everest of truth that is unavoidable to every Christian who reads his Bible or her Bible regarding this towering subject, the sovereignty of God in salvation. Jesus said, all that the Father gives me will come to me. To come to Christ is to believe upon Jesus Christ. Paul writes, He chose us in Him before the foundation of of the world. This is one of the central and core truths of the entire Bible. It is the truth of the doctrine of election that before time began, God chose those who would believe upon His Son, Jesus Christ. That of all that He has given me, I lose nothing. Jesus would actually accomplish their salvation. He would do far more than make them merely savable. He would do far more than merely remove barriers and obstacles. Jesus would actually save them in His death upon the cross and in His continuing priestly intercession for them, He says, I lose nothing. None for whom Christ died will ever be lost. All for whom the Savior would lay down His life at the cross, He would not lose a single one of them. He is a faithful shepherd. This is the equivalent of Romans 8, 29, and 30. This is a golden chain of salvation. There are no additions and there are no subtractions. All whom the Father has given to me long before they ever came to me, they were given to me in eternity past. I lose nothing and I raise them up on the last day. And it is the Holy Spirit of God who will pursue them and draw them to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is only in this manner does the Godhead work in perfect harmony. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in Him, this is all those whom the Father has given to me. This is all the elect. Everyone who beholds the Son and believes in Him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise Him up on the last day. Now, the only way that the Arminian can look at this is very simply this. The Father has chosen all who choose Him. And the Father looks down the tunnel of time and sees who will choose Him. And upon seeing who will choose Him, the Father then, like tag team wrestling, tags them back and chooses them back. So the Father chooses and works with only those who believe. The Son, in going to the cross works with an entirely different group according to the Arminian scheme. The Father works only with believers. The Son goes to the cross and lays down His life for the whole world. For everyone, a totally different group 
than the Father who chooses those who choose Him. And then the Holy Spirit, that too is an entirely different group. For the Spirit merely woos. And those who hear the gospel, which is not the entire world, right? So it's a different group than the entire world for whom Jesus died. The Holy Spirit of God gently woos to come to Himself, to come to Christ, those who hear the gospel. So here are the three members of the Godhead, and here are the three entirely different groups that they work with. The Father with those who choose the Son, the Son with the entire world, and then the Holy Spirit with only those who hear the preaching of the gospel, whether they believe or do not believe. No, it is the Arminian view that fractures the Godhead. It is only a definite atonement for those chosen by the Father that preserves the unity of the three members of the Trinity in accomplishing salvation. To deny definite atonement is to deny the unity of the one saving purpose of the Godhead. Christ went to the cross and laid down His life for the sheep, not for the goats, but for the sheep. Not for sheep of another fold, but exclusively for the sheep that belong to the household of God. The Jews then gathered around Him and were saying to Him, How long will you keep us in suspense? And there is a note of sarcasm in that. If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Their unbelief is blatantly obvious. They are coming close to even taunting and and mocking the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus answered, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they testify of me. But notice verse 26, but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. Now the Arminian says it the complete opposite. He says that you are not of my sheep because you do not believe. But Jesus said it correctly. Jesus said, no, I'll tell you the reason why you don't believe in me. And the hardcore reason is the doctrine of reprobation. It is because my Father has passed over you. And my Father has chosen not to save you. And to leave you in your sin. And to leave you in darkness. And for your heart to remain hardened. That's why you don't believe. The reason? Because you're not one of my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. If you were one of mine, you would hear what I'm saying and it would ring true in your heart and you would fall to your knees and you would humble yourself and you would commit your life to me having repented of your sins. My sheep hear my voice. I and the Father are one. Those whom the Father loves, the Son loves. And those whom the Father rejects, the Son rejects. And that which the Father pursues, the Son pursues. And that which the Father refuses, the Son refuses. They are of one essence. They are of one attribute. They are, they are one. But in addition, built upon that, it is implied here from verse 28 and 29, they are also one in mission, one in purpose, one in direction. They, this is like two parallel uh, uh, rails on a, on a train track. They are running perfectly uh, in parallel fashion together. Verse 29, My Father who has given them to Me, referring to these sheep, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. If Jesus would go purchase the salvation of any other group, He would be working in disharmony with the Father. And as Jesus leaves heaven and comes to this earth, 
He will pursue the eternal purpose and the eternal decree of God in saving the elect. And what will not happen will be this. The Father will choose His elect, but the Son will certainly not come into this world and say, well, I'm going to die for another group. I'm going to go ransom someone else. You have your elect. I will go to the cross and I will die a death of a different scope. All whom the Father gives me will come to me. And tonight, if you are in Jesus Christ, you may know that it was the Father's intention in eternity past to save you, and it was the Savior's effort upon the cross to save you with great intentionality, and it was the Holy Spirit of God who opened your eyes, opened your ears, opened your heart, and brought you to faith in Jesus Christ.